I greet you all in the most gracious name, the name above all names, the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I also want to take this opportunity and welcome you all to Beulah Land. If you are returning, thank you so much for the love and support and the loyalty as well. And if you are new here, my name is Beulah. And so I just want to say to you, oh yeah. Oh yes, I'm a child of the king, his royal blood now flows through my veins, and I, who was wretched and vile now can sing. Praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the King. Hallelujah. Yes, I am redeemed. I am bought with a price. Jesus has changed my whole life. When he said it is finished. And I just want to say in Zulu, Umoya wami ausai egufeni. Inwadi ya matala. Eya ing mangalela. Na yo ya betelo aganye naye. Glory to Jesus. I'm so happy to be here this morning. I really love sharing the word of God. And so beloved, I am here to share the word of God today. I love the blessed Savior's name. I love the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is my life. I remember people normally would be asking me, do you get paid? You know, and then I don't blame them because we live in a world where everything is compromised. People don't do something unless there's a motive behind. We had such a great time yesterday on the radio. It was so heavenly. I really enjoyed uh, myself, you know, um, this is quite an experience. I went to church with my heart bubbling with joy, you know, God taking me from glory to glory. Uh, I really felt so good. I still feel good as a result, you know, to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, to be led by the Almighty God is all I ever desired in my life. So, in all the shows that I ever presented, yesterday takes the cake. I don't know, but it really left me, you know, shedding tears of joy. I was really so blessed. I still am. So, and I glorify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I intended doing this recording yesterday after the services, but I hurried to the mall because the stuff that I needed here in the house, I needed vegetables, I needed fruits, you know, and also, you know, some stuff to drink. So I came back drained because of the heat. It's really hot. It's so hot. And so I was tired as well. And I just had to rest. Because one can never be productive while they are tired. And another thing, I did not have the message yet. I didn't have the message. I didn't know what I'm going to preach about. And so I just wanted to read a psalm, you know, say some few words, you know, after that to just put more emphasis on the psalm. I wanted to emphasize on Psalm 35. But um, the Holy Spirit led me to the message that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Um, it's a Monday, the time is 11 o'clock, and so I want us to talk about uh, a message entitled Fighting from a Position of Victory. You know, people normally fight for victory, but when you are a gene from God, you are fighting from a position of victory. Let's do this. I guess in the initial. Necessity. Victory is mine. 
Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Cause I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Hallelujah. We're going to find a scripture reading from the book of Daniel chapter 3. We read from verse 16 to 17. Hallelujah. Well, it reads as follows. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Verse 18, But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our dearest Heavenly Father, the great I am, the Alpha and the Omega, the author and the finish of our faith, we are once again come, O Lord, to receive from you. May you open our spiritual eyes and ears so that all glory and honor may be unto thy name and thy name alone. We ask all those believing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Gombona masinya Ishilo kanchalo inkosi Kaese lilanda ibandla Gosugo luku We are diving on the message entitled Fighting from a Position of Victory. Hallelujah. And we read from the book of Daniel chapter 3 verse 17 where we saw the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. We all know the story of how they were exiled from Jerusalem to Babylon. The Bible says God was so angry at the Israelites for idolatry because they were now worshipping idols. And so that was the punishment for them to be found in Babylon. They went there when they were still young. And so God told them, after 70 years has elapsed, I will come back and take you back to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. You know, idolatry has always been the greatest sin before God. And that's the reason why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, together with Daniel, were found in Babylon. But the Lord told them, Mary, bear children. Let your sons marry. Allow your daughters to get married. Multiply and replenish Babylon. But when the 70 years has elapsed, I will keep my promise. I'll come and take you back to Jerusalem. Not only that, you also told them, don't worship strange God. Don't listen to false prophets prophesying in my name because I did not send them. But the most important thing, pray for the prosperity of the city of Babylon. Because when the city is prosperous, you shall also be prosperous. When the city is peaceful, you also shall be peaceful. 
together with your families. And he assured them that the plans he has towards them are not plans to harm them, but plans to give them a better future, plans to prosper them. Hallelujah. And so they had the assurance from the Lord. That's the reason they kept the faith. They refused to compromise. And there was a time when Nebuchadnezzar made a golden image and he expected them to bow to that image. But I like what they say in Daniel chapter 3 verse 16, or rather how they say it. They took a bold stand. They said to Nebuchadnezzar, O oh, king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Hallelujah. They had so much faith in their God. Faith makes one bolder. Faith is masculine. Faith has muscles and hair on its chest. That's the faith I know. Glory to Jesus. And they said to the king, O oh, king, we are not careful to answer you in this manner, in this matter. We won't bow to your image. Our God will deliver us. But Lalela, even if he doesn't deliver us, let it be known unto you, O oh, king that we shall not bow to your image. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 says, Follow me as I follow Christ. Hallelujah. Because what you are following or what you ought to follow in a man as Christ. And so Nebuchadnezzar was not following Christ. That's the reason they said to him, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. That was not disrespect. That was an uncompromising stand on the word and the promises of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are not disrespecting anybody when you stand for the truth. And until you find something you are willing to die for, you haven't lived. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. If somebody doesn't follow Christ, don't follow them. If a pastor doesn't follow Christ, don't follow him. Glory to Jesus. If pastors don't follow Christ, then don't follow them. Hallelujah. Fighting from a position of victory is knowing who you are in Christ is believing in what the word says you are the moment you know who you are it settles all Maubona Umuntu striving so much and so bad to win that person still has an amnesia. God hasn't taken them to familiar places where they see their original image. So they keep fighting for what they already have. In the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 5, Jesus was teaching uh, at the lake. And so the Bible says as he was busy teaching the people, he saw two empty ships and the owners thereof were busy washing their nets. And so Jesus made use of one of the ships. He made it a platform to stand and teach the people. After he was done, he went to the owners thereof. And so he spoke to Simon 
He said to him, launch into the deep, let down your nets for a draught. Hallelujah. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we've toiled all night, but have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. In other words, Simon is saying to Jesus, we are letting go of ourselves to embrace you. We are now going to start fighting from a position of victory, not for victory. Hallelujah. And so as he fought from a position of victory, as he operated from a position of victory, the Bible says the nets were full. They even break. They broke because there were so many fish inside. At thy word, we will fight from a position of victory. We're going to stop fighting for victory. Because we already granted that. Hallelujah. The woman with the blood issue. I'm closing. The woman with the blood issue spent 12 full years fighting for victory. But as soon as she got a revelation of who she is, of who she was, that her healing is right within her. Then she broke protocol. Hallelujah. According to the law, this excessive blood flow rendered this woman ceremonially unclean. Anything she touched was unclean. If people touched what she touched, they'd be unclean as well. And so she was not allowed to go in public. She was quarantined for 12 full years. If people hugged her, they'd be unclean. Even her own family members were avoiding her. They didn't want to hug her. Oh, I love hugs. I cannot just about imagine how it felt, how it would feel like not having to to hug your loved ones for 12 years. Mina, I love hugs, guys. I'm so affectionate. I love so much affection. I'm all touchy, 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 you know. And so that's how I am. And uh, like a cat, you know how cats act. They are all touchy, you know, like Bula. And so I just about imagine how that would feel like having not to hug your loved ones. For the whole 12 years, it would mean my death. That's how I was manufactured by the ancient of days. And so this woman was quarantined for 12 full years because of the excessive blood flow. And the Bible says the, this time when Jesus was in, the, was in the temple, you know, and so this woman just pressed through the people. Because she said within herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Hallelujah. And she pressed through the crowd. She was not even scared. Anything could have happened. People could have turned against her. They could have, you know, hurt her or even beat her. Because as I said earlier, they say anything she came across, you know, she came in contact with, that thing was going to become unclean. And here she is breaking protocol because of the revelation. And then she proceeded. She touched the hem of his garment and she was made whole. Immediately, the blood flow stopped. 
fighting from a position of victory. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I feel I should stop here. And I just want to say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you and in you until the Lord's return. Hallelujah. God bless you.